Hi everyone, this is Jennifer with Eversweet Apiaries, and today I'd like to show you how I make winter frames for the bees. So we all know bees don't like to break cluster over the winter um, when the temps are 50 degrees and lower, then they form these tight clusters and they will not break cluster to go eat. And so they need to cluster around honey to be able to access it and eat. And so we feed winter supplements for them in case they run out of their honey stores. But these supplements, which can be fondant, winter patties, sugar bricks, candy boards, um, dry sugar, the mountain camp method, um, are only good uh, if the bees can access it. And so those would be days that are 50 degrees and higher um, that they can break cluster and go up there and get it. So if it's cold and they're in a tight cluster, they can't access that winter supplement. So I thought it, last year I tried this out and I thought about it and I was like, um, there, there has to be a way that we can put this down near the cluster so they can be able to access it if they need it. And we like to feed supplements, even if they have winter stores, your bees should have at least 60 to 80 pounds of honey, which is about the size of a 10 frame medium box to get through winter. And if they don't have that, then you absolutely need to feed winter stores. Um, but we like to feed the bees these supplements anyway. It's a very cheap insurance policy. And we find that they eat the fondant first, then they eat the dry sugar, and then they save their honey for last. Or they might munch on their honey as they go. Um, but there's, they typically have honey stores well into March. And March is the really scary month for bees when, because usually by that time, they've used up all their um, honey stores. And so if we get a mild winter, the bees are going to be more active. Um, so they're going to go through their honey stores quicker. Um, and when they start brooding up in January, then they start going through their honey stores even quicker. So we, we definitely need to make sure that we have these supplements for them. Um, but it, again, it's no good if they can't access them. And um, so this, I tried this out last year. It worked great. I was worried about moisture. Um, that wasn't a problem. They ate it all up and survived. So I consider that a success. Um, now, I wouldn't remove honey frames to do this um, because, you know, these are just poor supplements to honey. But usually you have a frame that is just drunk home or maybe partially filled that you could swap out this for. And, and so you just set it right down into the brood boxes. Um, I run store and a half, so um, my top box is a medium. And so I'm just filling a medium frame here with this fondant. And the fondant um, is just 90-10 fondant, um, cream fondant. And you can purchase that online in, you know, in large quantities. And um, I just start packing them into the frame. Now you probably, you might be able to use like sugar brick recipes that, that would probably work as well. Um, this wire is used to hold in, hold up um, the fondant. And I use Winnie hardware cloth. I have a lot of it left over from making bottom screens. And so I just save all that, uh, you know, extra because it comes in really handy for all sorts of stuff, closing up bees, moving them, using them as entrance reducers. Um, so you probably could use a quarter hardware cloth too. You, but this is what I got and I'm using it and it, and it works out great. Um, this frame's already done here and this is uh, probably about five pounds of fondant in there. Uh, your bees should have about six pounds of winter supplement backup feed in addition to their winter stores. And so that should probably do it as a, as a backup, but I'm going to put in dry sugar as well because it absorbs moisture and it's a feed as well. Um, and so that's, that's it. And so I'm just going to show you how I do it. It's just really simple. Um, here's a pro tip here though, with working with fondant, you get your hands a little bit uh, greasy here with Crisco oil and we're shortening rather vegetable shortening and just start digging in to the fondant this is actually the hardest part which is getting in here and getting now you can like i said you can make your own recipes here there's tons of recipes on the internet but just keep it simple um you want to avoid any fondant recipes that um you know add starch cornstarch to it so like avoid any marshmallow recipes because marshmallow um is coated with um cornstarch um, you don't want any extra additives over the winter because they're not having their cleansing, cleansing flights as much. And so that extra solid stuff is just sitting in their guts and that's not good for them.
So this, just keep it simple. Whatever recipe that you find, just keep it simple. Um, I don't add any essential oils, nothing, nothing. Just again, keep it simple. I don't do the apple cider, apple cider vinegar. Um, there's some stuff out there about that, whether it's good or bad. I'm, I'm not sure. I think you would have to be really precise um, with your measurements. And then I'm worried about the heating aspect of it and creating any HMF toxicity levels to the bees there. Um, but again, that's, that's up to you. Proceed with caution. Um, if you're going to add that, um, do, I would look up the research for that and then make your decision. Um, but just get it in here and it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, okay, that's probably good enough. And then we're just going to staple this side. I like to staple one side already. So let me just go staple this side. I've got a winter class coming up on, when is it? November, November 9th. And I'm going to talk about how to get your bees through winter. Hopefully. Of course, nothing, nothing's guaranteed in beekeeping, but the things that we do hopefully improve our odds. And you don't have to be real precise with um, the opening here, you do want it, you know, big enough so they can get through. So you're going to just eyeball it, you know, three eighths of an inch there is B space. So they can be able to get in there. And again, this wire is used to, just to hold up that fondant, hold it in, and that's it. But yeah, the class, um, I'm having a winter management class. It's a hybrid class. In, it's uh, in person and Zoom. Um, and so it's, it's geared towards the mid Atlantic region. Um, but certainly, you know, other regions are welcome as, uh, to attend as well because these same, um, techniques can be applied or concepts can be applied to your region. Of course, it's just weather and forging dependent. The B is the B no matter where you are. Um, but those variables do come into play as far as the temperature, weather, and uh, foraging. Um, but we're going to do a recap, a quick recap on the fall management. So what the things that you should have done. And then we're going to take it um, from November to March, um, the things that you should be looking at. And then talk about feed, uh, mites, and what else? Oh, common uh, winter problems, diseases. Um, so I encourage you to attend that. And Zoom makes it really easy. You know, you can be anywhere and attend. Um, but that's it. Um, this is all you need to know about making a winter frame feed for your bees so they can access it when they're in a cluster. If you got any questions, just give me a shout. Happy beekeeping.